today's um, hearing because we have lost a space pioneer. And Sally Ride um, did so much to promote uh, space. And uh, even though she tried to get out of the spotlight, uh, she just attracted uh, so much attention because she was interesting, she was committed to physics and science, and she was committed to getting girls um, to start taking the STEM courses. And when I wrote a book um, in 2004, um, I did um, chapters on the women pioneers in different fields. So I did education, politics, government, sports, and aviation. And then I interviewed women who were still breaking barriers in the same field. So my aviation chapter was Amelia Earhart and Jackie Cochran. And my interview was Sally Ride. Uh, what could be more perfect than the first uh, women to actually fly the long distances and, and prove that women could be great pilots, but then the first woman in space. And in my interview, um, I asked um, different questions about what was the most important trait for her success, and she said it's the ability to work with other people. Uh, which she found very helpful uh, as the first woman astronaut. And I said, oh gosh, that's interesting. I would have thought you said perseverance. And she said, well, that's a close second. And then I asked her, um, what was her most helpful childhood memory? And she said, you know, it's funny. It was actually an issue in school. And I got discouraged by something. I don't remember what, but I came home and I was very down. And my father basically said, well, you've just got to reach for the stars. She said, that's ridiculous to think about right now. And she said, but it did happen. So I think we all owe her a great debt of gratitude. And I just wanted to start this hearing by recognizing how much she gave. I want to thank uh, the both the chairman and the chairman the, and the ranking member of the subcommittee uh, for being here, uh, because Senator Nelson and I have done so much to um, keep the emphasis and the importance of NASA in the forefront. Um, I'm a budget cutter. I'm a person that wants to set the top line of a budget, but then it's so important that we set the priorities for what goes in that budget. and. Uh, Senator Nelson and I um, and many others uh, have tried to assure that we don't eat our seed corn, that we continue research, that we continue to reach for the stars, uh, to go beyond where we are now. And NASA is the agency that can do that. And there have been people who have tried to abolish NASA, frankly. and. Um, I think that going forward, um, I will be uh, certainly very comfortable with uh, the ranking member, John Bozeman, who has done a great job of learning the issues and where we are, and he's hit the ground running, and I'm so appreciative uh, for Senator Bozeman uh, and his interest. Let me say that um, establishing our part of the Space Station as an American National Laboratory uh, was a great um, um, accomplishment in that it opened the space station for research from outside entities. And it can be private companies, it can be universities, it can uh, be open to anyone who is going to do uh, research that can only be done in space. And we all know that you can only do certain uh, experiments in space because of the microgravity conditions, and you can't duplicate that on Earth. So uh, finding out what is out there um, is so important for our future. And we've seen what uh, exploring space has done for us in national security, uh, being able to put satellites up there and uh, do satellite uh, surveillance, uh, missile, uh, satellite-guided missiles, um, has helped our national security so much. Um, but now we have this laboratory, 
and one of the issues of this um, hearing is going to be um, what we're doing there, and certainly um, are we going to uh, extend it further than 2020, or is 2020 its life, and what are we going to do to fully utilize it? Um, I was at uh, Johnson Space Center a few months ago, and I saw the hits on the alpha magnetic spectrometer. Now, one of the almost casualties of the budget cutting without establishing priorities was that um, we were told that there wouldn't be room for the alpha spectrometer, the alpha magnetic spectrometer, to be taken into space um, by a former NASA administrator. And um, many of us fought back, and Dr. Sam Ting fought back, the Nobel laureate at MIT, uh, who felt that we had to have that up there to get the cosmic rays and try to determine if there is dark matter and what it is and uh, what effect it will have on the expansion of the universe. And I'm sitting in the Johnson Space Center looking at the hits on the national, on the uh, alpha spec, uh, magnetic spectrometer, and it is so far 18 billion hits of cosmic rays, more than even Sam Ting thought we would get in this time span. And so this is a, a very basic science that we're doing there that um, could lead to any number of things uh, in the determination of what the universe is and also um, if there is dark energy, is it something that can be harnessed? Um, no telling. He doesn't even know everything. And as Dr. Ting um, so aptly points out, um, almost all of the major research that we have done uh, since we uh, went to NASA and um, uh, set NASA up, everything that we went into to research was for a purpose that is not what we got, but what we got was even more important. And that's why continuing the priority of NASA and space exploration is so important for our European partners, uh, for um, our own quality of life and uh, capabilities to expand. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for holding this hearing. Um, I did request this hearing because I want to know what we're doing up there. And um, so I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you from your different perspectives. Um, but I do hope that as I am going out the exit door that uh, we are able to excite the American people uh, as we have in the past on what the future is. And I thank you all for being here. Senator Bozeman. 